When cannabis becomes legal this summer, the only place Ontarians will be able to use it is private homes. Residents of at least one Toronto condo building won't even be able to smoke it there. As CBC's been reporting, this building has banned smoking marijuana in units, on balconies, and in common spaces. Growing cannabis will also be prohibited, as will deliveries of pot purchased online. With legalization around the corner, more and more condos are racing to put similar rules in place. In just a moment, you're going to hear from a condo lawyer. But first on the line is Abby Roach. She's the owner of the Hot Box Cafe, a cannabis lounge in Toronto. Abby, what's your reaction to this condo's rules? I think it's outrageous. Uh, you wouldn't ask somebody to not consume beer or wine in their apartment. Um, the, the way that people consume cannabis has completely been changing as well. Uh, there's no reason for people to not be able to vaporize or have edibles or, uh, the you were saying, they can't even have deliveries. That's insane. Um, I think if something is going to be a legal substance, we need to look at it as a legal substance as opposed to an illegal one. Mm. Um, you know, the, what it, the, some people um, are concerned about the secondhand smoke and the smell, uh, which is, I think, part of the motivation in this case. Um, and yet smoking cigarettes um, is permitted in this condo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And cooking smelly foods and wearing uh, smelly perfumes is also allowed in these apartments. So having a, a little bit of vapor, a little bit of uh, cannabis smoke, especially on a balcony, open window, again, there's all kinds of uh, things that you can get to eliminate the smoke as well and the scent, um, I think is, you know, it just doesn't make sense. These are people's homes, which they pay to live in, and their private dwellings. And for the government to tell us that the only place we can consume is in our homes, and then we will be evicted if we follow the government's ruling. That's kind of nutty. Right. So uh, the future of cannabis lounges, such as the one you operate in Toronto, mm-hmm. is unclear right now. So going mm-hmm. forward, if people can't smoke in their condos, as I mentioned, there may be other moves similar to this one made by this condo board. If they can't smoke in their condos and they can't smoke mm-hmm. in lounges, where does that leave them? Nowhere. It leaves a legal substance with nowhere to consume it. And if you look at a a city, especially like a city like Toronto, which has everybody lives in rental units, condominiums, even I I live in a house. I have 10 people that are attached to me by walls on either side. So there isn't any private space that you could consume at. Um, Our lounge sees about 200 consumers a day on average. And most of them are parents. They don't want to consume at home with their children. They live in rental units, which are smoke-free. There's all sorts of reasons that people come to a cannabis lounge and don't consume at home. Mm. It's good to get your thoughts on this. As I say, we're going to hear the legal point of view coming up in just a sec. Perhaps you can listen to that. Um, But I appreciate the conversation. Thank you. No problems. Have a great day. You too. Abby Roach is the owner of the Hot Box Cafe. Denise Lash is a condo owner and founder of Lash Condo Law. Her firm works with condo corporations across the province to draft rules around how marijuana can be used in condos. Denise, is it legal for a building to ban smoking marijuana once that marijuana is legal? Yes. So I just want you to know for the past few months, our firm has been very busy and the focus has been on marijuana. And I think the concern is that, you know, there's been smoking, tobacco smoking for years. And sometimes there are issues, and we deal with the issues of smoke penetrating from one unit to the other. With the introduction now of marijuana, what boards of condominium corporations are concerned about is more people smoking. So now you have recreational use, which means many owners. Right now you may have 5% of the population. Now you may have 50%. Who knows? So the concern is that it will interfere with other people's use of their unit. And there, now we know the effects of secondhand smoke. So it's not just marijuana that we're concerned about. It's now rethinking smoking in units in its entirety. So, but, it, but, what it, but is it legal for a condo to make this move, given that the substance itself will be legal? So condominium corporations can pass rules. And the rules have to be reasonable, and the focus of the rules is to prevent 
interference with other units and the common elements and people's use and enjoyment. Mm -hmm. So that's why rules are enacted. So you'll see pet rules. You'll see all kinds of rules. And here is a smoking rule. What we are recommending is going non-smoking, whether it's in its in the units and the common elements, or maybe it's just preventing smoking on balconies and the common areas. Right, and because that's one of the issues here that's that makes this extra interesting is that this condo building isn't banning cigarette smoking. What's the case there? How is pot smoking any different? Well, we are recommending going smoke free if you're gonna do that in the units and all the common areas. And Meaning that rather than do what this condo is doing and say no to pot and yes to cigarettes, that, that your advice to all condos is to say, if this is something you want to wade into, make your you, your entire building smoke-free. Yeah, and I can't really comment on that situation because there may be a reason. Um, there may have a lot of tobacco smoking people. I, I don't know. But you have to also keep in mind is that the board's proposing those rules, and owners have the opportunity within 30 days to call a meeting to vote against the rules. Mm -hmm. So there is that opportunity. And then think about that, that if the majority of the owners don't want these rules, then there's a a mechanism. And that's why we have the Condominium Act, which is consumer protection legislation and gives owners the ability to vote against the rules. And they're doing this now before legalization. Why? Yeah, and so the reason you do that, and, and we are... In our rules, it's it's the same sort of thing, is that there are existing smokers, existing tobacco smokers, and what you do is you pass these rules saying no smoking. Um, however, if you are an existing smoker, you register, you enter into a grandfathering agreement, and therefore you'll be able to smoke for the term that you're in your unit. And so there's that grandfathering. So if corporations wait till after marijuana is legal, then what you're going to be doing is grandfathering everybody. Mm. And so the rush is now on to get these rules passed now. Um, People will only in Ontario be allowed to consume marijuana in their homes. Are there legal issues if they can't do it in their home? If they can't do it in their home, well, I and I heard your previous uh, speaker, mm-hmm. uh, and, you know, where are people going to smoke marijuana? Well, it's recreational use. Maybe they go the edible way and not smoke. And but in the w- case of this condo, you can't even get your edibles brought, you haven't, have them in the building or have them well, mailed to you? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if that deals with edibles, but uh, the concern from the point of view of our, our clients has been really the smoking and the growing. Mm-hmm. So that that is a big one, too. It's good to talk to you about this. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Denise Lash is a condo lawyer and founder of Lash Condo Law in Toronto.